Okay, we are now streaming live, but let me just click out of this so we don't get the echo. We do not want the echo. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll, roll call, please, Veronica. Ms. Casbah Latourette. Here. Mr. Coleman. Here. Mr. Gray. Present. Mr. Guziak. Here. Denise, Ms. Ide. Here. Mr. Murphy. Here. Ms. Ori. Here. Okay, let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a public comment. So let me. All right, this is from Enda Brennan, and she says, hello, thank you Board of Education during this tough time. My name is Enda Brennan, and I would like to comment on the lunch contract renewal and budget. My understanding is that the contract renewal includes an increase due to a minimum wage increase. Request the board to address the lunch fee increase and potential knock on effect to push coin fees as well as lowered participation in the program. Request that the board provide context as to how the pro projected budget is impacted by the tax payment plan and how the property tax increases impact the revenue items. Thank you, and uh, Brennan. Thank you, Enda, for that comment. And nothing else arrived, right, Denise, for public comments? No, I didn't see anything else. Okay. So um, on to um, addition of, I didn't receive an addition of an information or discussion items. So we're on to information and discussion items, item six, the first reading of board policies. And this is our public first public presentation of these policies. We're not approving them tonight. This is our first go at it. Linked, you'll find um, all of the policies listed here. Uh, they they include our current policy as it appears in the in on our website, and then each policy has the press policy along with footnotes that we can read that references the state law and school code, and then. Further down, the, the third item on each policy is uh, how it would appear on our website if we approve it as is. But we have a chance this month to um, get feedback on these policies. And if we want to make any changes or adjustments, we can do that before we approve them. OK, does anybody have any questions? Anybody from the policy committee care to bring out any things that might be of interest? I don't really have anything to add at this time other than to say I had entered some comments out on the, uh, the share drive. So they can be found in, uh, in that Excel spreadsheet. Great. Thank you so much for that. And thank you again to the policy committee for all the work that you do on this. We so appreciate it. Um, on to the discussion of revised district goals. Jason, if you could please bring those up, I would appreciate that. I hope you've all had the chance to review them. If not, we're gonna review them here because they're so important. So we'll just walk through them. Jason, do you have them to project? Here, okay. uh, yep, can you see them? Mm -hmm. So 
So maybe we'll just read through it. Denise, would you mind? No, not at all. I just wanted to make sure we've got the same one up. It's the second draft, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Yes. Just making sure we got the right one up. Right. Okay. Is that the is that the revised second draft? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I see it. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, Denise. Yeah. What's, what, what's the process going to be here? Um, we're have any of the comments been uh, put into a single document or does that happen later? Oh, so yes, people um, gave uh, comments to me and I have included them in this document <clears throat> and we are ready to move forward with the synthesized documents. This is what we're proposing today. We can take notes and um, and suggestions from here and move forward toward the finished document that we can improve next time. Got it. Thanks for asking. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I know there was a lot of comments um, that and feedback to Carissa. So this is the document that was sent out at 207 today that had a kind of all of them pushed into one place. So um, yeah, Chris, if you want, I'm happy to read read through this. And then if anyone has any comments, um, I'll just go section by section. Does that work? That sounds great. Okay, so introduction. The Milburn Board of Education in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and in consultation with D Superintendent Dr. Lind hereby suspends the previous goals for the 2019-2020 school years established in the fall of 2019. We establish these new goals in their place, bearing in mind the emergency priorities as communicated by the Illinois State Board of Education and our Milburn mission beliefs and parameters as determined by our 2020 strategic plan. Priority one, care for the extended safety, health, and welfare of students, staff, and community. Priority two, provide for continuity of student learning for the current 2019-2020 school year. And priority three, establish a re-entry plan for the 2020-2021 school year with input from stakeholders. Any comments, changes to the introduction? Oh. Okay, I'll go on to goal number one. Define and continuously monitor the welfare needs of the community and staff and establish systems of support to respond to them. Bullet point one, establish and execute a system to provide school lunch and breakfast to all students that request the additional meals. Bullet point two, send informational emails to the community at least weekly. Number three, listen and respond to community concerns. Four, coordinate with governmental and community resources, other school districts, local, county, state, and federal. Other activities as identified by Dr. Lind and the staff. Anything for goal one? Okay, I'm gonna move on to goal number two. Establish a remote learning plan focused on the learning standards not yet covered in the 2019-2020 school year. Bullet point one, identify which learning standards in each grade have not yet been taught in the 2019-2020 school year and make every effort to cover remaining topics. Bullet point two, research best practices. Bullet point three, consult with staff and unions. And bullet point four, prioritize well-being of students, staff, and families. Any additional comments for it or changes? Okay. Goal number three, provide academic, emotional, and behavioral supports for students with special needs. Bullet point number one, research best practices. Bullet point two, ensure to our best ability compliance with state and federal laws for the services provided in relation to changes and guidelines made during the COVID-19 epidemic. Bullet point number three, ensure delivery of those supports inaccessible, or those supports is accessible to those students and is in compliance with shelter in place laws and restrictions. Uh, I, I've got a question there. What, what laws are in place for shelter in place? What I understand is, is that there's mandates, there's really no laws. So what laws, so what laws are we, are we following or are we supposed to follow? 
I think what there uh, what there has been, um, Jason, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There has been a suspension of certain laws and um, and change and modified expectations. Is that a good way of saying it, Jason? Yeah, there's there's been a. Um, um, in special ed, there's been a lot of discussion. There's there, some of the laws are not changed. Most of the laws are not changed as far as timelines and the fact that we have to deliver special education instruction to students that need it. Um, that has not changed, but anything that has changed or has been relaxed during this time, uh, we would follow that. But the bullet point reads, and is in compliance with shelter in place laws. What, what is a shelter in place law? So I, I think we could say shelter in place guide, guidelines, would that be preferred? That would probably be more accurate. Sure. Unless someone knows of a law that's been passed in connection with shelter in place, I don't believe there is one. Do you um, do you have the ability to change that right here, Jason, or should we do that afterward? That's fine, either way. I do. Look at that. Uh -huh, look at that. It's magical. Okay, on to goal number four. Provide access to remote learning for 100% of students by May 1st. Bullet point one, provide internet access points when possible. Bullet point two, provide non-digital learning packets if internet access is not possible. Questions or comments on goal four? So, uh, so these are goals. When, when do we, uh, when and how do we do the specifics? of of how that happens so we will or is that, or we'll, is that outside the scope no no so we will we want to retain the um the review process as it's set up in our um our agenda calendar so what we will do is go ahead and do the superintendent evaluation based on a tool that we draft from this based on these new revised goals um, and then we will uh, have that review in July, June. and then we'll, the new, we'll draft the new goals for the 2020-2021 for the school year in August. Okay. And, approve those and then, okay, and then I think I had another question. Uh, we're saying two or more learning activities. Is that coursework or what? What's defined as a learning activity? I think Jason can speak to that. I would define that as any engagement activities that we have listed on our learning packets. Okay, so two or more or three or more, that seems a little light. At least for our, uh, my, one of my comments, I think, was it seemed kind of light for, at least for middle school. I mean, you know, right now, I think the kids are getting five or six uh, uh, things to do a day. So why are we down to three? Or, or why are we not specifying more than three? It says three or more. I understand that. Because 20% of our students aren't engaged hardly at all. I'm sorry, I missed that percentage. About 20% of what I don't have the um, hard, any hard data on this. No, no, no. no. Just I, yeah, okay. I just, you just glitched a little bit. I didn't hear the percentage. 20%. Huh? Yeah, I'd say twenty wow. percent are very little engage, have very little engagement, if at all, at the middle school. That's disappointing. Very disappointing. Okay, but, but it's very hard to control that. I mean, our teachers are reaching out. Our um, oh, it wasn't a criticism, Jason. It was simply yeah, no. wow. <laughs> it, yes. Right. The national average is forty percent. Really? Wow. Okay. Yes. Keep in mind, um, you know, I've, I've been, I don't want to get off track too much here, but sure. the, learning is a social, social exchange and a social enterprise and psychological 
exercise. We are not designed to learn like this through a computer. And um, some people can learn individually and are motivated and are and like to explore on their own, but others and many of our students do not. It's just the way we're going. So it's, it's a tough. It's, we're trying to be sensitive to every situation. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yep. So I was just going to go back to Jim's point on the on when we would kind of evaluate these goals. And so I know one of the things we'll be looking at uh, going forward is going to be the uh, the board agenda calendar. Um, reviewing that process, but we we do have for in June to discuss the superintendent's self evaluation, evaluate the superintendent for June on our board uh, agenda calendar, and then in July going forward. I mean, we may have to revise that because it may not be we may not be ready to to do that yet in June. But just that's what's on the agenda calendar at this time. Great. So thanks. So, yeah, no problem. So. Jim um, kind of started us off on goal number five, but I'll just quick read over it. And then if you, anyone else has anything else they wanna add, we'll go ahead and add that. So goal number five is ensure student engagement in remote learning, reach an engagement level of 95% of all students and at least one learning activity per week by May 1st, two or more learning activities per student per week by May 15th, and three or more learning activities per student per week by May 22nd. Anybody else have anything else to add to that before I go on? Okay, goal number six, create a comprehensive re-entry plan for the return to school in the fall of 2020 with feedback from stakeholders. Bullet point one, develop a plan to involve all stakeholders in the planning process and present that to the board by June, 2020. Please include the following topics. Consider alternate tools for the board to monitor student learning in light of the lack of test scores. Consider a plan to provide needed professional development to teachers to account for their changing needs during remote learning. Bullet point two, clearly communicate the progress of the plan to stakeholders. Bullet point three, clearly communicate to parents and the community their responsibilities regarding the plan. Bullet point four, present plan to the Board of Education for discussion, feedback, and approval by July 2020. Any questions or feedback on that last point, on that last goal? When will the stakeholders be identified? That's during the next part of the process, right? In June, July? Uh, when I say stakeholders, I would say representation from every group. For example, um, uh, community members, teachers, parents, board members, staff, administration, those are all stakeholders. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. So you, you're not necessarily going to define them. They're just a, a group. No. That, okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions or comments on the revised district goals? Great. Um, so we will put this on the agenda for approval next time. Um, is, do we have a volunteer to create a superintendent evaluation tool from these revised goals? We'd want to make sure that it's not a huge departure from the one that we created from the other goals. So we'd be pretty much the same format. We'd just be plugging in the new, the new goals into that tool. If not, yeah, then I, I'll, I'll be happy to, to update that and have okay. that out to everybody before uh, the next meeting, so we can discuss that at the next meeting. That would be great. Thank you, Denise. Yeah, I just no want Jason to have ample time to do his own self review before we, before we do it. So that's great. All right, then no other comments on that, then we will move on to um, budget projection. Jason, do you have something to project for that? Yeah, did you did you want to do the uh, board agreements and the self-governance goals? Oh, I, no, I just totally missed those. So sorry okay. about that. <laughs> I, was, I was on mute. I was trying to say something. <laughs> skip a few and just see if you're all awake. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, on to the review 
of board self-governance goals, self -governance goals and the draft of revised goals. This, this we, we started, if you recall, this past fall, we had the idea to let's make goals for our own board of education to um, so that we continue learning and growing as we expect the staff and the students to, to learn and grow. Um, however, so, uh, upon reviewing those, um, it seemed that a, a few of those were no longer achievable um, and, and there, were, there were going to be some additional expectations that we couldn't have foreseen in the fall. So I took a stab at um, revising these. Um, and I know, uh, Jim, you had some comments. I didn't, I didn't get them in time to incorporate them into, into here. Okay. So we can go through them. And if you don't mind, um, putting forward your suggestions, that would be really great. Yeah. Um, I'd have to get on another computer to do that. Let me see. Um, well, I know the first one there, SMART goals, it, that's an acronym. I just thought we'd spell it out. Just so we know what that is. That was one of the one of the comments. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can call it, call it up on a. On a, on a well, one thing we could do is also table it until the next meeting, or. Well, I don't think it was any. I, I, I don't think it was anything. Uh, anything major, as I okay. as I recall. I okay. mean, it was probably just. Uh, you know, maybe. Uh, Maybe just trying to make make some of the things a little bit more uh, uh, straightforward. I, I don't know, can you scroll up a little bit? I think there was some clarifying language things, right? That was yeah. probably the extent of it. Okay. Yeah, Jim had some good points in his, um, in, in clarifying. Yeah, I was, I was only able to look at, to glance at it, but it seemed, like if we, you know, if I went back and incorporated those, it would be a good idea because they were, they made things more clear and straightforward. So, uh, um, that's but, the case. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste, I, I wouldn't spend too much time on it then, uh, for me at least on this. Okay. Okay. Um, so as we, as we move through these, do these seem to make sense with everyone? Yes. Yes. Does anybody have um, comments or things that we'd like to, to change? Then I think, it would, I think it would be great if we instituted along with this, a board self-review, like how well, you know, maybe the next meeting or the, the cow after that, um, just go through these and say, this is what we were able to do. This is, you know, this is, these are ways in which we can improve and maybe get an idea for, um, some goals that we can make for ourselves, uh, self governance goals for next year. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Okay. Then, could um, Veronica, would you mind terribly adding that as a future agenda item? Yes. So that we don't lose, we don't lose it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. On to, if there are no further comments on that. Um, the review of the board agreements. Now it has been a while since we've taken a look at our board agreements and usually we have a board reflection in which these are covered at least. So I thought it might be nice to take another look. We're just, this is first glance. Um, you, can, you can take time to review it or we can go through it now. Um, just depending on what everyone's feeling like doing, but I thought it would be great to revisit these because usually we do have a board reflection. We just don't have the ability to do that without the IASB staff able to, and without us being able to get together. So it's just that time. Well, I personally, I'd prefer to uh, review it offline. Okay, that's that, fine. That's, that's me. Do you want to put it, should we put it on a, as a future agenda item? Is, are other people interested yeah. in discussing it now or, or both? Okay, then we can put it on for a future agenda item. 
So everybody, if you could just take some time and feel free to send me notes on this. I know there are a lot of documents we're going over that time <laughs> of year where we're going over a lot of our, our procedural documents and it can be a lot. So um, if you could review these and um, the, I, I think Jim actually drafted these for us originally, um, but it was a couple of years ago and we did look through them again last year and they seem to be all applicable still. But I, I would love for everybody to just go through them again. Maybe we can sit, you know, go through them uh, thoroughly in uh, in um, like the July committee of the whole. And although I think there's only one meeting at some point when there's not a lot else going on, let's put it that way, and uh, and just go, get back to that mutual understanding of 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 the the agreements that we make um, to each other. Um, so we'll put that also on future agenda items. Um, on to budget projection, Jason. Okay. I will, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, probably both of us, but I'll, I'll put up the budget projection. This is the grand overview. You've seen this. So I, I don't want anybody to panic because it doesn't look good in, in the out years. But I want to remind everybody that Every time we do a projection, it looks bad in the fourth and fifth year. And it's because of the compounding impact of um, these years. When you, when you start to lose ground out from like FY22 to FY23 over here, it's a 250 thousand dollar drop. If you maintain that, and then the next year you have another $250,000 drop, then it's a $500,000 over the course of those two years, that's why it compounds and then gets rolling. So um, I don't want anybody to be, the sky is falling at this point. That's five, five years out is a long ways away. We have no idea what's, what's gonna happen. What I'm looking at is uh, the current year and next year and the year after um, seeing where we're at. Again, this is, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We're, we're assuming revenues and expenditures on lots and lots of different items from health insurance to um, from, from health insurance to supplies to personnel. It, it just, there's lots of moving pieces here. I just want everybody to remember that. Yeah, pro probably one of the biggest factors that will impact this is, you know, if the state does any reduction in the uh, EBF funds that they provide to the to local districts. Uh, and that would have an impact on this significantly. Uh, the other pieces, unless they would do something with freezing property taxes or something, this is fairly accurate. Um, but we will do some more scenarios looking at best case, worst case. You know, if this happens, then here's what the the uh, projection would look like. Right, we continue to update these as we get more information. So as, we, and as we get closer to approving next year's budget, which is due in October, which makes no sense, I know, uh, but that's the way Illinois does it. We start spending next year's money in Jul on July 1st, but our budget is not due until the end of October, so. No, end of September. End of, oh, end of September. End of September. The first of October. We have to have it filed in October, but but it has to be adopted by the board by September 30th. It has to be within the first uh, quarter of the fiscal year. Okay, that's what I was thinking of the filing, I guess, versus the adoption. So it has to be adopted by September 30th. But um, with three months of spending money before we even have to get our budget done. But that also gives us more um, flexibility to understand what where our expenditures and revenues might be for next year. I know the um, county is talking about um, different options for paying property taxes instead of two payments, breaking it up into four payments throughout the year for people. That's on the table, I, I'm guessing, for tomorrow's discussion. That as long as we get the money within that fiscal year, we're okay for now. We're, we're, we have enough uh, cushion at this point 
we're in a strong financial position overall. So that's nice not to have to worry about it. Other school districts will, will be in trouble, so. One of the things that is fortunate, at least all of the <clears throat> homeowners who use an escrow account, the banks are required to provide that money to the uh, county on the, on the date that it's originally due. Now, one of the things I saw today is talking about that for both individuals who pay their income tax or their property taxes directly to the county or biz and businesses, instead of requiring the individuals to file something saying that they lost their job or there was some other impact due to COVID-19 to get that for payment plan, there is some discussion now in the county on the county board to just do that across the board so that businesses and homeowners uh, would have the for payment option. And that will impact our cash flow and uh, would also impact our ability to collect interest, even though interest rates have dropped. We still do collect quite a bit of interest uh, for those property taxes that we receive in June that now we wouldn't receive till July and the ones that we would get in September that now we won't get until you know the end of October. So that will have an impact as well as the overall reduction in interest income that that we'll anticipate. And that's included in the um, amended budget too, is that reduction in uh, interest income this year. Dr. Johns? Yes. Uh, you may not have an answer to this, but uh, the first installment is uh, due in what, like two weeks, three weeks? Correct. Any idea, Correct. When, the, any idea when the board, when the Lake County board would, uh, would make that decision? Uh, they have a meeting tomorrow and it's on their agenda. Okay, so, so what, I, I, you know, I'm assuming that that decision is going to be made tomorrow, and then the county would have to turn around and communicate with uh, taxpayers because I already received my own tax bill for my right. own home. So I'm assuming that most of those bills have already gone out. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So uh, that will require an additional communication somehow from the county to the taxpayers that they have an option um, okay. to either. Right now they have it, you know, in the original that went to the committee, it was set up for an application process for people to indicate that they were impacted and to basically say, you know, either I lost my job or this happened because of COVID-19. Um, or if they go with the other version that I know is being discussed, we just automatically change those payment due dates. And one of the things that happened when you change those dates and you tell people that it's not due until this time without them having to, you know, supply some, Kind of documentation, a large majority of the people who can wait will wait to make the second and fourth payments. Well, naturally, so, yeah. You know, and that will impact our cash flow. And like okay. I said, would also impact our uh, interest income revenue. Right. And if, you know, if this continues for a while, you know, more than this one year, then it will start to impact us uh, in the long run because we're also looking at. Uh, for instance, with our categorical grants, our transportation, special ed, et cetera, probably only getting two of the four payments each of the next, this year or next year. So by the end of next year, they'll be a year behind. And so those dollars won't be available for us to use in our, in our budgeting. They'll be promised to us, but they won't be available and in our bank account to use to pay our expenses. And those are payments from the state, right, Steve? Those are state payments. Yeah. The state payments are what I'm most concerned about. Um, you know, they've always in the past when they've had cash flow issues, they have always over time made up those dollars um, and then later provided them to the districts when they had the cash flow. Um, we're hoping that they'll do the same thing again this year. Okay, thank you. Or the, you know, in the next couple of years as, as they go through this, um, you know, major financial issues that the state will encounter just because of all the additional expenses they've had for COVID-19. So now we're dealing with delayed payments, possible delayed payments from the county, as well as possible delayed comp, uh, payments from the state, which really compounds the, uh, Correct. the, the number of financial issues that, that could come It's up. not quite as bad because we're looking at only a one month delay in each of the two payments. 
you know, you would still get half of it in June, then half of it in July, uh, half of it in September, half of it in October. So that isn't as bad as it could be. Uh, the, the state payments are the ones that, you know, we, we don't know when we'll get them. In the past, when they have, states had these issues, we have been able to count on the fact that the major, the, and, and at that point in time, it was called general state aid. Now it's called the EBF funding. Uh, they have made an effort to make sure that districts got that on a timely basis. Uh, and so if they continue to do that, uh, we'll be able to, you know, we'll be able to get by, but it's, it's gonna be more difficult because just the transportation alone uh, is about 250,000 a year that would be delayed. Uh, and then I'd have to look at what the special ed is, but it's, you know, it's going to be significant as well. So you're probably talking at least half a million dollars a year that's going to be delayed. So we'd lose half a million, not lose, but we wouldn't receive half a million this year. We wouldn't receive another half million next year. And then hopefully at some point in the future, they would catch us up and pay us back that money. Now, when, when we're talking about additional money, we're always guaranteed our base funding minimum, right? And when we talk about additional money, we're talking about the money that they've added since the bill passed in 2017? Correct, but there is there are also provisions that if they're not able to, if they have to reduce the EBF funding, then, uh, then that funding would be like on a per student basis. Um, well, first it would go with the tier, the, the tiers of the districts most in need, uh, and then would also impact the uh, higher tiers as well. So it, it, assuming that they don't cut that EBF, the EBF dollars and just maintain them, uh, then we won't really see a reduction, but there's a possibility that we could also see a reduction if, if they have to make severe, more severe cuts. And I believe that education is about 30% of the state's budget. So it's a fairly good sized chunk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody um, have any further questions about the projections? The budget projection? Okay. On to the Cottonwood Estates annual impact fee. Steve, could you just quickly recap what this is, please? Basically, we have a, a very small subdivision. I think right now there are only three or four homes in that subdivision. Uh, and basically the impact fee is to help offset the cost that the district would um, realize as a result of having additional students. So with this, for this specific subdivision, the impact fee increases by the CPI. So if you scroll all the way to the end, it has the, this, this first part is basically an agreement with the county to collect the money for us. And then at the very end is the chart that shows what the impact fee is. So it, uh, for a two bedroom home, it's 1,309. Yeah, it's 1,309. Yeah, and for a five bedroom, it's 6,500. So it went up by the 2.3% of CPI from December of 2019. And this would be effective for the 2021. Does anybody have questions on this? This is another one of those things that comes up every year. Um, and there are zero, zero homes planned for that subdivision at this point. I okay. think we had one, I think we had one built there Two Last years. year or the year before. It's been a while. Yeah. And at that point in time was when we entered into this agreement with the county. It might actually have been three years ago. Okay. Great. Then um, on to, does anybody have further questions about that? On the, the Cottonwood Estates annual impact fee? Okay. Then we'll move on to the school lunch fees for the 2020-2021 school year. Okay, with regard to the school lunch fees, um, the way that we determine what our increase is, there's a tool that the state provides is called the paid lunch equity. And it's designed to make sure that our students that 
pay for their lunches and don't receive free or reduced lunches aren't paying less than the state is paying it, the, the feds are paying us for our free free lunches. So it, it, I, I plug the data into, we use the October uh, claim, I plug the data in to the spreadsheet, it, it punches out and says, okay, here's, here's how much you have to charge. It's limited to a 10 cent increase per year from 2018-19 to 2019-20. We didn't have to have an increase. This year, if I'd gone with the full increase, it would have been $3.15, no wait, 305 would have been a 15, 15 cent increase, but the state allows that increase to be capped at 10 cents. So I could we could have done the 15 cent increase, but we're required to do the 10 cent increase. So that will take our lunches from uh, $2.90 to $3 for next year. And then I also increased the adult meals and the second entree with full meal by the 10 cents as well. We didn't make any change to, uh, to the milk cost. And then the items listed there below are the um, items that are sold a la carte. Most of those are at the middle school. And the items in bold are items that increased. No, no they didn't increase. So I may have bolded them, but there, there is no increase for those. They would all remain at the same cost. <clears throat> so I'd like to point out um, that we do not make money on school lunches. School lunch is a break even situation. We hope to break even on it. Um, so this is not a money maker for the district. It's run by a third party Arbor management and we try to negotiate a good price for our families to keep it as low as we can. But um, the, we, we continue to do the best we can with that. But it, I, I wanna point out that we don't generate income or over and above what, uh, what it costs us to provide that. Yeah, most of, most of the monies that we would get in excess of what we pay Arbor, typically we're using to replace or repair equipment. Uh, almost every year we have to do a major repair to one of the dishwashers at one of the two buildings. This year we had an issue that in the serving area, the, the unit that does the heating and cooling for the serving trays, we had to have some major repairs there. Um, so any of the additional monies we get in addition, you know, that in excess of what covers Arbor's cost, we're typically putting back into that program uh, to maintain the equipment because the school district owns all of the equipment. So even if we would change to a different company, all of the equipment would stay with us. So we only purchased the food and the labor from Arbor. Okay. I hope that clarifies um, how we go about um, pricing school lunches. Thank you so much, Steve, that I thought it was very clear. Really appreciate it. Um, does anybody have any further questions about this? Okay, um, on to the approval of Arbor contract renewal for the 2020-2021 school year. Now this document basically um, walks you through uh, the renewal. The food away from home CPI uh, is what is used to determine the maximum increase. And I didn't include it in the packet, but I do have documentation from Arbor as to uh, many of the food items that we use and what those increases have been. And typically when I look at those, the increase is more than what the CPI is, which is 3.1%. Now, in addition, just like the issues that the school district is dealing with, Arbor also has to deal with the fact that uh, minimum wage is increasing. And I believe this next year, there are two wage increases, one in July and one in January. And so there's a separate portion of the document that allows uh, their contract to be increased by the amount that they anticipate they're going, by the amount that they will be paying uh, their employees to do that minimum wage increase. Uh, so it would be up and above, up, above and beyond the food away from home increase. And this, we've had this 
at least I think on the last two renewals, at, at whatever point the minimum wage started increasing is when we started seeing the um, minimum wage adjustment added to this document. Does anybody have questions for Dr. Johns on this? When would be the next time we um, went out to bid for this, Steve? Well, we do a, a bid and then you can do four renewals. And I believe that this is our third renewal. So I believe we have one, we could um, do an adjustment next year and then the following year we have to rebid. I know they did allow us make a special allowance for people who were where they should be rebidding now. Uh, they gave them an additional year that they could extend their existing contract because in order to meet the guidelines of the bid, you know, you have to allow each of the companies to come inspect your premises and a lot of those kind of things that would have been a problem with uh, the stay at home order during the period when uh, they would actually be reviewing the bids and, and uh, going through the process with the vendors. But I think back at the beginning, there was a, Yeah, this is the third renewal. There will be one more renewal after this. So we could renew it this year and we could also renew it. So we could renew it for the 2021 school year and then again for the 21-22 school year. And then for the 2020 2022-23 school year, we would have to have a new bid and and go out. To, we'd have to go out to bid for the 20. 22-23 school year. Okay. This this item is just for information, correct? I noticed the correct. The not we're not actually approving this tonight, right? It no, says, you, we we would ask you to approve it at the next meeting. Right. Just just so clear. all of these okay. items are just for for review now, and then they would be approved at the next meeting. Right. I just wanted to clarify because I know on our agenda it does say approval. Yeah. So, and that's probably my that's fault because I wrote no, it no. when I, when I, I gave I her the item. To clarify, we're not voting on this tonight. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes, this is a committee of the whole meeting. For people who have just turned into their, tuned into their first meeting, this is a committee of the whole meeting where we have discussion on things, but we don't take action on them. We take action on regular board meetings. So that's just a little, a little disclaimer in there. Does anybody have further questions about this? The Arbor contract renewal? Okay, on to the fiscal year 2020 budget amendment discussion. I'm not gonna push that. Okay, on the budget amendment, um, the, and this is amending the current fiscal year budget. Um, reflect some of the changes in the estimated revenue and expenses for the current FY 2020 fiscal year. We had both revenues and expenditures that were impacted by the closure um, because we basically pay, continued to pay all of our employees, um, including before and after school care, extracurricular salaries or extra duty salaries, even though we aren't getting any of that revenue to cover those. So that was a, a hit that we took. Uh, interest income has went down. Um, we had revenues typically from having other districts tuition special ed students into our district. Uh, that's less than what it was the prior year. Um, our, our activity income, which is our uh, spring sports and some of the clubs and things that we would be doing this time of year, that income's down about 23,000. There are about, there's about 47,000 less in donations than what I had budgeted. Um, before and after school income is down about 125,000. We did realize substitute savings because during this time of uh, remote learning, we aren't having to pay substitutes. However, we do have a fairly large number of substitutes that have applied for unemployment. At this point, I don't know what impact that is going to be. I think we've had 
21 applies, 21 people apply so far for unemployment this year. Last year we had three individuals that applied for unemployment. Um, and because we are a reimbursable uh, entity in that we don't pay an unemployment tax, we pay whatever they receive an unemployment salary. Um, I'm anticipating that for some of those who were approved in mid between beginning of March and end of March and receive dollars that we'll probably get a bill sometime uh, soon for them. And then also again, probably in July or August for the quarter that ends June 30th. Um, so there, there will be some costs there that we aren't anticipating. And some of that will bleed over into the next fiscal year. Um, maintenance and repair costs are higher uh, a lot of that is due to our HVAC systems. And I, I know when I was talking to Terry Miller, our building and grounds uh, director, um, we've had a lot of actuators, which is a, an item that controls the heating and cooling. Uh, it seems like they're all starting to fail right now because in, in sec certain sections of the building, because all of those units are at about the same age. Uh, so we are starting to see that. We also had to purchase additional cleaning supplies uh, and other COVID-19 related supplies, both before as well as during the time that we've been closed, because we have to be ready to open up and we have to have those things on hand to be able to meet the guidelines uh, for reopening. Uh, we also purchased a unit that, actually two of them that actually adheres the um, disinfectant to surfaces that will allow that it to continue killing the, the virus longer than if we just did it with a spray on and wipe off. Um, but if you go all the way to the, I believe it's at the end of my report, I did a pretty detailed, yeah, right there of all the different changes, what local revenues changes were, uh, as well as um, the expenditure side, what happened. So you can kind of see where those amounts were and what, what dollar amounts were changed uh, were changed in the budget. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Johns about this? I have a question uh, regarding all the changes in the budget. What impact does that have on our, our cash flow? We've uh, you know, shared in the past or been told in the past that we had about six months where we could go without any kind of revenue and uh, we would be okay. My question is, what kind of impact does this have to our cash flow? Nothing significant. I think the overall net change is, uh, if you look at the projection, is about $170,000 less than we'd anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not going to make a major change there at this point. The one piece that would, when they look at the, um, and, and it still won't make a major change, it'll just be a, a little bit of a blip. Uh, if we don't get all of our property tax revenue in June, like we, or the majority of it in June, like we typically do, uh, then that will have a little bit of a cash flow issue. But uh, bank wise, we still have, I, I think we're still going to be close to that same six months uh, average. Uh, you know, revenue or average uh, dollars in the bank at this point. It may be slightly less, but for instance, most of our payrolls are about half a million dollars. So if we're down 170,000, then that would be what the impact would be. And we have two payrolls a month. So uh, I, I think we're gonna be fine. I, I will work, you know, on doing a little bit more of a cash flow with some of these scenarios, but at least through this uh, fiscal year, I don't think we'll have any issues uh, the, the major issues are going to come once we find out what the state does as far as state funding, if, if there's any type of property tax freeze enacted, mm -hmm. um, because we already have that in our budget. Uh, and then as we get further into, um, you know, once we complete fiscal year 2022, if we don't make any changes, and assuming that all the projections are correct, which I think Jason mentioned earlier, you're doing projection on projection on projection. You're looking at 
you know, this increase and then it's going to increase this much. That doesn't always happen. Um, the one that we've typically had uh, good luck until this year with has been our health insurance. We've typically looked at a six to eight percent increase in health insurance every year, and we've been more in the zero to two percent. Unfortunately, this year we're at a fifteen percent uh, for next year. So, you know, if if that trend continues, or if we have a six or eight percent multiplier on top of that fifteen percent. Uh, which is what the projection shows, um, then it will start to impact us. Okay. And then Thank we you. also have to look at meeting our own minimum wage um, thresholds uh, with our some of our classified staff, who, when we look out, you know, two to three years, when um, the minimum wage is fully implemented, uh, that that'll have a tremendous impact on. Uh, what we can do and we'll have to look at are, are there other places we can save money or, or is there going to be additional funding that we can access to maintain our current uh, staffing levels and, and unfortunately when you look I, I don't want to be doom and gloom but when you're looking at the major costs in a budget the major costs in a school budget are always people and their benefits so it is something that when we get out two to three years about three years from now, we're going to have to seriously look at, and hopefully by that point, the projections won't look the same. They'll be more positive. But if they still continue to look negative, then uh, unfortunately, the we can still look for places to save money, but the major place to save money is in people. Okay. Does anybody else have further questions for Dr. Johns? Thank you so much again, Steve, for your clear commentary. We, we so appreciate it. Um, on to the iPad and laptop lease. Great. At the next board meeting, uh, we're going to be presenting an iPad lease for a refresh of 500 of our iPads. What we'll do is um, bring in another 500 iPads and shift our oldest iPads out. We will um, wholesale them out. The good news is that, that even at the wholesale level, they are still worth about $100 after six year, almost six years. So that's a very good uh, sign. And very happy about that. So um, some of them won't be, it you know, depends on if they have a cracked screen, clearly they're not gonna be worth as much, but uh, we will get as much value out of them as we can. The cost of the uh, lease is going to be about 80, a little over 80,000, between 80 and 85,000. Um, we're also refreshing our secretary's uh, desktops that they have here um, and moving to laptops. The cost is about the same, but it will allow us during um, a work at home orders for them to take their work home with them and have access at home without using their personal devices. And it's time, this was already in the plan and in the works as a very high priority. I think Steve said they're, they're four or five years old. They're actually between five and 10 years old. So. Yeah, I just guessed, I didn't know how old they were, yeah. but I, I knew that they weren't young. No, they're um, not. I, I know they were ones that had been used somewhere else and then got um, moved to the office when somebody else got new ones, so. They've already been, been, you know, passed down to somebody, you know, passed down from a classroom or somewhere else. Yep. They were in the old labs when we went to iPads and um, didn't renew. We, we don't need labs, as many labs anymore, computer labs. So they came from the older computer labs to um, the office staff. Okay. Does anybody have questions about this expenditure? Is the eighty to eighty-five thousand dollars is is that for iPads or is it for the iPads and the laptops? Both. Okay, so for both, it should be around eighty-five thousand. Yep, it was uh, two hundred and it was around two hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars total. Got it. Okay. I'm and still, then, then, Jim, I'm still I'll looking. also be getting quotes from 
three other companies that do leases so that we can make sure that the Apple lease is competitive and whichever one gives us the best bang for our buck is the one that we'll recommend. Sounds the good. financing cost is very low right now, of course, um, right. especially in a three-year lease. But the um, I'm I'm still refining the order because uh, I want to get get it down to a better price. Sure. Okay. Thanks. They don't have a, Apple doesn't really negotiate. They'd say this is your this is the public price. This is the school price. It's about a hundred dollars per device. But per device, we are getting them for with the case four hundred and sixty four dollars yeah. and that's a hundred and twenty eight gig ipad generation seven so that's a really good price with the, with the um um the case with the integrated keyboard i was very pleased with that yes we could go with the 32 gigabyte hard drive but we're finding that those after a few years, they, we start to lose memory and they don't function as well. Those are some of the older ones we're um, decommissioning and we'll be selling, have, have that smaller memory. And I think they'll last longer and have more value down the road if we get the, the bigger memory. So it's worth it. Okay. We want it to function. It's now, now it's more important than ever that we have these devices for kids. Other school districts are scrambling to try and get devices and to get up to speed. And we had a smoother transition. <laughs> it's never smooth, but as far as the devices go, it worked pretty well for kids to take them home and, and uh, work with them at home. Okay, does Thanks. anybody have further questions about this? So we'll be voting on this at the next regular board meeting. Please let, um, Jason, no, if you have any questions that come up between now and then, I'm sure you're always happy to answer questions. Which is next Monday, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Quick, quick, quick turnaround this, this time. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll, I'll send out the lease as soon as it's finalized. Thank you. Um, then on to construction change orders. All right, last year, if you recall, when we did some construction, um, you granted Steve and I permission up to $25,000 for change orders, which sounds like a ton of money, but when you're doing a half a million dollar project, it can go pretty quick. Um, Steve has some specific ideas of what we're already seeing as things that we didn't include in the original build bid that we would want to include now. Uh, one is the rock wall at the middle school that's uh, starting to tumble. We want to get a price on that. Uh, we don't want to see anybody get hurt because of that. Um, it might last a year or two. It might not. And that's about seven or 8,000. And as long as they're out here, and I guess the same company does do some repairs to the rock walls, we'll put, put them on it and see if we can get a good price for that. Another item that we didn't have is wayfinding signs. Uh, when we've had a lot of complaints from uh, parents and especially parents from other school districts that come onto our uh, campus and they're knocking on the wrong doors they're knocking on my window here at the middle or at the elementary school saying where where do i go for sixth grade basketball it, when you have to drive into our parking lot they don't understand that there's another parking lot behind the building so um, we want when you come on campus we want it clear where people should go and reduce frustration and try and get buses in the bus lanes and parents in the parent lanes and pick up drop off activity entrances. It's always nice to have that clear. And some of our older signs are uh, dilapidated and crumbling. So it is time. That's one of and we even have a, we even have a couple that have actually, we used to have a sign uh, out on, on Melbourne road that directed people for parking. Uh, that one was a wooden sign and pretty much just rotted away. Uh, we have some wooden signs in the back as well that uh, when you look at them, they don't have many years left on them. We did about three or four years ago, repainted them, and that's given them a little bit more life, but we're looking at replacing those, but just making it very clear where people should go. The other, the other issue is with the new Route 45, people don't know where to turn to get onto, is it Freedom Way, Sean? No, not Freedom. Independence? Is it independence? I think it's independence. 
they miss yeah. the the turn on independence because there's no signs and it looks different for them now. So we want to put something out on 45 that directs them if we can. Get yeah. that now that that's not included in this because that's probably a six month to a year process right. with the state to get approval to put up a sign there. Right. And then I think they specific, have a specific type of sign that I don't even know if they maybe they do the sign and then we have to reimburse them. Uh, but there is a process uh, to go through the state to request approval for the sign on 45. So when we get to that point, that would be an additional cost beyond what we have for our wayfinding signs. Yep. And then the other the other possible change orders, we just don't know what they're going to find underneath the, as far as foundation, uh, how good a shape the foundation is under the asphalt. They're cutting away sections, and um, we don't want to lay new asphalt over a bad um, surface underneath because it'll just crumble again. So we want this. Yeah, we did. As I say, we did have some soil borings done probably three or four years ago, and, and we did use those to look at what was put into the document. Any of the, the majority of the additional items that could happen, uh, that they could find, we do have a unit cost uh, that was part of the bid. So it would just basically be looking at, uh, you know, this is a four by four section and we have to do this underneath it. And that unit cost is what will be used, but that still will be a change order. Unfortunately, when you do soil borings, it may be great where you are and then you go a foot a different direction and all of a sudden then the, everything isn't what it should have been. So one of the things that occurs when the water gets underneath the asphalt and the cracks, then it pushes it away and, and sometimes erodes and damages that subsurface. So that's the part that until they actually cut some of this away or remove the top layer, they're not gonna know what's there. Uh, and basically the front lot at the elementary building is gonna be completely replaced. But in the other lots, we're only looking at cutting and patching uh, to give it another four or five years uh, of life. So it's, it's basically a way to extend the life of the asphalt without a huge cost up front. But no matter how you, you look at it, anytime you're dealing with parking lot repairs, it's expensive. And it's not fun because it doesn't have anything to do with student learning or anything exciting necessarily, but it has, Correct. and it's been 20 years since this lot was built. And so 21 years now, it, it's time. I have a question in that um, since we're discussing these change orders, we have uh, an agreement that we that we did vote on before the board saying that we, we authorize you to to make these changes mm -hmm. on our behalf up to $25,000. Does this mean that we will be will we be voting on these change orders next time or is this was this just an FYI? For no, that, that was an FYI. Uh, and then it's just an issue if the board wants to at the meeting next Monday to actually go ahead and give us authority again. I don't know if the authority last year was only for last summer's project or if that was meant to be an ongoing authority. I think it doesn't hurt to revisit the authority issue every year. I think that's a good call, Steve. I really appreciate that. So why don't we um, add that as an agenda item to, um, to revisit the, the change order authority? Um, by the board. I think that'll help Steve and as yeah. you know, as you're trying to make these decisions moving forward with the summer projects. And especially with a project that's only going to last about two week, two to three weeks. Um, it is something that, you know, we, we probably won't have a board meeting before they're done and offsite. Um, and then that would increase the cost if they had to leave and then come back again. So it is something that it would be nice to on next Monday, have the board tell us what the parameters are, and then we'll go with that. Let's do that. That's great. Thank you, Steve. Does anybody have further questions for Dr. Johns? Okay. So then we're on to future agenda items, which includes the press policy updates, the discuss the revised superintendent evaluation tool, 
approve the superintendent evaluation tool, hopefully. Well, these, these won't all happen the next meeting. <laughs> approve revised district goals, superintendent evaluation, review and revise board agenda calendar, review of the board agenda calendar. Oh, that's the same thing. And then the board of education meeting dates for 2020, 2021. Um, is there anything else that anybody else would like to add? Just the items that you had added throughout this meeting. I think we had the approve revised um, board of education goals, approve the um, board self-governance or evaluating that and or creating some sort of um, evaluation tool for that. And then revisiting the change order for authority for the construction projects. Great, and then the board agreements. Did, did we say the board agreements? Did you say that? No, I didn't. <laughs> I said the goals, but yeah, the agreements need to be there too. <laughs> no, you know, between the two of us, Denise, we will get them all. <laughs> um, great, then um, no one has any, but anything else to add to future agenda items? Okay, then on to superintendent report, Jason. Okay, um, our, our discussion is of course talking about how we wanna end the school year and, and moving into the end of the school year. It's coming up quickly. Our teachers only have one more week of planning that's due on uh, Thursday. So the teachers are, we've asked the teachers to get their plans for the next week to us on Thursday so we can review and get them all set up, make sure the links work. And uh, then we post them on Friday for the following week. Um, so this is it as far as our weeks of learning. Um, we're hoping to plan some fun activities for after Memorial uh, weekend for the kids to have a kind of a celebration of the end of the school year to get something fun to end this in this uh, school year. I've had meetings with local superintendents. We had one with the Grays Lake group this morning talking about different issues and what's going on with learning and what we're planning on for next year. It's it's going to be interesting. So I just wanna give people a heads up. There's, there's a lot of talk about what's going to happen or what could happen. And we are all very concerned about any of the scenarios, whether we return fully in person in August, that's a huge concern. We're looking at learning loss. We're looking at social emotional impact on kids um, and on teachers. It, it's just going to be very rough, even in the best of scenarios. We're hoping for a full return to learn, but I, I don't know that that's going to happen or that it will stay that way throughout the year based on what we're seeing so far with um, this COVID. So, uh, but we are planning, we're, we're starting to talk about next year a little bit at the same time that we're talking about how to wrap this year up in a positive way for kids. And um, we'll keep going with that. I've scheduled some Zoom meetings this week and next week. Uh, just open them up. We'll see what happens. Um, I really um, I'm hoping that people jump in. The first one on Wednesday already is full, so that one's booked up, but the others are not. So if anybody wants to jump into any of those meetings, <clears throat> that'd be great. I just want a casual discussion. How are things going? What are your thoughts? What, what can we do to help? I wanna make sure that we're reaching out to people. I miss people and connecting in a more of a casual way and seeing people, it's not, it's part of the job that I miss the most. And so it's been tough. And I think our teachers are the same way and a lot of our parents said we're not designed to be isolated uh, like we are. So this is very tough on all of us and it's a strain even in the best of circumstances. Um, speaking of that, we had a nice parade on, on Friday where the parents came to us at um, Gurney Mills and the teachers were lined up in the parking lot and it was nice to see people there. It was weird, a little bit weird to see people but not be able to talk and interact like normal, but um, it was great to do what we could in those circumstances. So it's um, 
that was wonderful. And I, I thank the uh, third grade team and Mr. Walshire for doing a bulk of that, uh, if not all of the, that planning. So appreciate that. Other than that, our, we're clicking along, like I said, close, close to the end of the school year and uh, hang in there. Um, Jason, I had a question about um, graduation and anything planned around that. <clears throat> the last I heard, I know these plans are somewhat flexible. The, the, Jake has had a committee going for the last two weeks, I think, a parent committee group that's trying to make decisions on eighth grade graduation and how we should do it. Um, I believe it's going to be somewhat of a drive up situation where the kids and the parents would come together as one unit. They get out of the car. I don't know if the parents are going to get out or just the students will get out of the car. They're in their cap and gowns. I believe they come up today, their cap and gowns. They'll walk across the stage, physically walk across the stage. No touching, no handoff, no shaking the hands, but just walk across the stage, take a picture and um, then we'll put up all that together in a video. So I'm, I'm picturing, I don't know if the stage will be outside under the awning at the middle school or if it'll be in the gym, but just a cycle through of cars and, and parents and kids and then take a picture and they're out. That's good to know. Thank you for that. We're also trying to maintain some other traditions like the ceiling tile paintings. Um, we've talked about how we could accomplish that as well. That's very important to kids, so. Great. Thank you, Jason. Does anybody have any further questions for Dr. Lund? Uh, just one, with the end of the year coming up, has there been any discussion as to how and when the iPads get back to the school? Uh, for eighth grade, they, they're dropping them off. I don't have specific dates, but I know we're talking about that in our admin team meeting tomorrow. Oh, I meant, I meant any of the iPads, or are the students holding on to them over the summer? Students are keeping them for the summer. Oh, okay. Yep. Didn't know that. Yep. We'll take them back in the fall. All right. That's good to know. I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that. It was in the Ben's newsletter this week. Mm -hmm. Oh, this week. Okay. Maybe right. this week too, but for sure it was this week. I know. I, I looked for it. Got it. All right, but I thanks. was looking for it, so... Yeah, we, we want them to keep them this year. Um, just if they can continue learning, we're not gonna have any formalized education over the summer necessarily, but um, they can still access. IXL will be available and Alex and different programs if they're uh, interested. And we highly encourage it. Oh yeah. Yeah, you bet. Reading. Okay. Uh, will they need to be rebuilt, do we know in the fall? Or are they just going to? No. That, that, well, they'll be, they'll be shuffled because the middle school will get the new iPads. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I meant, not rebuilt. I meant uh, re-imaged. I thought they re-imaged them after each, uh, after each uh, year. I don't think we did it every year. We did it last year. Okay. We wiped them and started over last year. Okay. All right. Thanks. I could be wrong on that. I'm not recalling exactly what we did but i know it was a bigger deal last year than typical right all right thanks um any further questions okay on to board reports does anybody have a board report they'd like to offer yeah um so my son has been building a uh Discord server. It's an online chat room for Milburn students and staff. So he's been inviting teachers. And uh, his math teacher, Ms. Berg, said, if you pass all of your work, which he has not done, she <laughs> will join. So he sat down for two hours and started doing some old work. So shout out to Ms. Berg. That was an awesome uh, motivational tool. And uh, Ms. Miller, who I believe is a fairly new science teacher, did join or said she would join the Discord server. So uh, I think that's great, a uh, great way to get in touch with the kids at their uh, at their own space and uh, and really keep them engaged. 
Great. Um, anything else? Yeah, I was just going to give a quick little update on um, the staff appreciation celebration. Uh, the, uh, the committee is still meeting, trying to get everything in order. The plan right now is there will be, um, you know, some special plans for our retirees and some special ways of honoring them um, at the end of this school year. And then the hope is that we would have this current year's staff appreciation celebration in the fall, hopefully when we return. So we are still planning everything as if it's gonna happen in the fall and hopefully we'll get to see it through. But if you have any questions about anything with that, just let me know and I'm happy to answer them. Great. Um, then I would just like to add, um, I've been attending as many webinars as I possibly can to try and get best practices, you know, best practice for, for board members at this time, at this very strange time. Um, and then this Wednesday, um, I have the IASB Lake Division Exec meeting. Um, so we'll be planning the, um, the Lake Division uh, dinners that we all go to. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be exciting. Um, and I, I was so delighted with the, the, the parade on Friday. I, I wasn't able to go because um, we were, Denise and I were delivering <laughs> teacher appreciation signs from the board to, um, and so was Brendan um, and a couple of other volunteers. So we went around to all the teachers and planted a, a teacher appreciation sign in all of their yards. Um, but my daughter was so delighted with all of it. And it was just, I, I think, honestly, people from neighboring communities have reached out to me to say, wow, who, who came up with that idea? That was such a great idea. And we've been looking for things to do. And, it, you know, it was, I think, I think it ended up being, um, I don't know, just sort of a, a community event, like a, not even just a Milburn community, but a, the, the broader community event. So it was, it was brilliant. Does anybody else have anything further to, to report? Okay. Did we skip the business office report? Business office report. Oh, we did. That's so interesting. Thank you. I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me today. So I'm adding a little, a little liveliness. <laughs> Keeping <you> <laughs> we, we pretty much discussed everything. Uh, the only piece that if you go to the very end, I've kind of got some financial implications, things that I'm aware of at this point, and we'll kind of keep adding to this as far as financial impacts of things that could happen. And then we can kind of use this as we look at, you know, doing some different projection uh, forecasts as we learn more and more information as far as what's happening with state funding. Uh, you know, after tomorrow's meeting, we'll have an idea of what's happening with property tax payments, uh, et cetera. So, uh, it's one of those things that's kind of got going to be evolving as we go, but kind of starting to put some of those things that are considerations for this year as well as for next year um, down on paper so that we don't forget about those kind of things that may happen or have happened already. I have to say, Steve, I thought this your business office report was brilliant this week. I mean, it really... I feel like it really set me up for this meeting with a, a pretty strong understanding of where we are financially and um, and where we're going financially. So just kudos. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Johns? Okay, we've already done board reports. So I'd like to move but we adjourn to closed session for the purpose of collecting negotiating, sorry, collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Second. Second. Uh, roll call, please, Veronica. Ms. Caspar Latourette. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. 
Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Guziak? Yes. Ms. Ide? I think Denise, oh, there she is. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Ordery? Yes. The motion carries. Um, the meeting is adjourned to closed session. And we'll see everybody. What the hell are we working at? What is that? <laughs> so we'll, um, what we'll do is we'll stay on this meeting and then we'll kick everybody out. So just give me a minute. And I wanted to announce, I forgot to mention that we're going to be doing a live play um, virtually. Oh, going oh wow. Live. <laughs> when is that? With, uh, <laughs> Wednesday the twentieth at seven p.m. So you'll you can go into YouTube and uh, we'll we'll send out links and everything when it comes to that. So it's a week from this Wednesday. That's awesome, Mr. Kramer's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it should be fun. Making a good effort. We'll 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 see how it turns <laughs> out. I'm sure it'll be great. Okay. So we're, now we're really adjourned, right? Now we're really adjourning. We'll go into okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Steve, can you stay in? Sure. I think I'm just going to take a minute to um, stop our streaming. <laughs>